I thought I'd do a tutorial today on Google Nix collection software because Google have just announced that this is to be made free. For those of you not aware, Google Nix is a collection of plugins for Photoshop and they used to be originally just called the Nix collection. It used to be about $500. Google bought this collection of plugins a few years ago. They were about $150 through Google. Literally just the other day, they announced that they're gonna be free. So you can head on over to Google Nix collection, just literally stick it into Google. And as you'll see at the top now, it says the Nix collection is now free and you can download and install them. Now you'll need obviously Photoshop or Lightroom as a host program to run them through. And there's a total, I think, uh, here we go, seven different plugins. And uh, you can see them here, Analog, Effects Pro, Silver Effects, HDR Effects, Define, Color Effects, Viveza, and Sharpener Pro. And you can kind of get a pretty good idea what they do from their, the names. The main one that I use, or that I use a lot, is the Color Effects Pro. And this is really good for landscape photography in particular. Uh, allows you to make lots of creative adjustments to your landscape pictures. So we'll jump into Photoshop and here I have a landscape image and I've made some initial adjustments in Camera Raw and got the image looking the way that I want it to to begin with and you'll notice that it's not particularly jumping out of the screen. Uh, it's fairly flat, fairly low contrast but we've got all the information that we need in there to begin with. So we've got some nice detail in the foreground here with these rocks and the grass, and then away in the distance, this uh, clump of rocks, and then this nice kind of dramatic looking sky. But as I said, in its kind of current guys, nothing kind of special. So this is where I'm gonna jump into the Nick software package and uh, really pull out some details. So we go up into filter, and you'll see down here we have Nick's collection. The one that we're concerned with is Color Effects Pro. So we'll go ahead and select that. So here we are now in the Color Effects Pro and we have all the different sort of effects that we can add to our image here in the list on the left hand side. And you'll see that there's dozens and dozens of them. And this is what I meant. It's taken me a couple of years of playing and experimenting really to find out which ones are really useful and can really enhance your image and some which are, uh, you know, maybe a little gimmicky or you know a little garish and so what we're going to start with is one of my favorites which is the pro contrast so we'll start here with the correct color cast slider and this image is looking a little bit blue or the sky is looking a little bit blue so i'm just going to pull that just to neutralize some of that blue effect that's roughly where i kind of like it to be then I'll move down to the dynamic contrast. And this, this slider here is kind of one of the most powerful in the entire package. If I start to pull this, what, what it does is it really increases the mid-tone contrast in the image. But what it doesn't do is really crush the blacks or clip the white. So we can still retain a lot of detail within the image. I don't want to go overboard with it. Something along that line. And that's just really brought out the detail there in the sky and some detail here in the foreground. Now, what I'd actually like to do with this image is treat the, the landscape and the sky separately. Now, I could do this with masks, but what the Color Effects Pro and the, the whole of the Nix software package has is control points. And these are really powerful adjustments that you can do to particular parts of the image. So if I go ahead and I click here, I can add a control point. Now, if I stick that on and then twizzle down the control points and select this little tick here underneath the mask, we can see what part of the image it's affecting. Now the white is the part that is being affected and black isn't being affected and then the gray in between is being affected a less amount. So actually I just wanna select the sky here and this is where the, the algorithms that the software is using is really good because it picks between where you drop it intelligently between say the sky and the landscape without having to do complex masks. So really, really kind of clever. So I'm gonna make this a little bit more and I'm gonna leave that. So that is now, if I untick this, that'll show me. It's now just affecting the sky and I can turn that on and off again and I can see it's just affecting the sky. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with how the sky's looking for the moment. And now what I wanna do is concentrate more on the foreground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here, add filter and then I'm gonna go back to my list and I'm gonna select Pro Contrast again. And now what I wanna do is just pop it on the foreground. And I wanna, what I, I'm looking, this foreground is too kind of dull. And what I wanna do is I wanna enhance the sort of yellows and oranges and give that a real sort of 
contrast with the blue in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a control point. I'm going to add that on. I'm going to select the mask so I can see what where it's affecting. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. So and move that around so that's nicely now only on the landscape part. Unselect that so I can see my image again. And now if I slide my correct color cast, it's going to take the blue out of the foreground and really start to bring out those oranges. Okay, so that's looking better already. Now I want to put some contrast in to bring out some of the detail. Somewhere like that, just for the sake of this tutorial, is roughly where I'd like it to be. So let's just have a quick look. We're making progress, kind of really making the image jump out a little bit more, enhancing the natural colors within the image. So I'm going to move on and add another filter now. So I'm going to click Add Filter. And this is a, another one of my favorites, especially for landscape shots, and that is the Skylight Filter. So I'm going to click that. Now, remember, we haven't selected a control point, so this is going to be a completely global adjustment at the moment. And I'm just going to crank this up just so you can see what it does. And actually here, it's not, not doing what it says it should, Skylight. It's really just increasing the sort of orange and yellow values in the saturation of the foreground. Okay, I'm going to turn that off and you can see what it's doing there. So that, that's not particularly what I want to do. What I actually want to do is draw out, just start to see some faint color in the left and right part of the sky. And the, the sun was actually setting behind this stack of rocks here. And, and hence, we're getting the, the colors in the sky. And what I'd like to do is just bring them out a little bit more. So I'll turn the skylight filter back on. And what I'll do then is I'll add myself a couple of control points. And then I will have a look and see where they're being added. And I'll just adjust those a little bit. So something like here and here. And that's looking pretty good. So I'll turn those off. And then I'll just start to crank up the strength a little bit. And you'll see that it's just affecting those parts of the image and then what i can actually do is i can just experiment by moving them around and seeing how it affects the overall image make this one a little bit larger and something like that is looking pretty good so i'm going to add one more filter at this stage and this is the darken and lighter light and center and this is really cool this is kind of like a natural vignette so if I go ahead and select that, and I'll just toggle it on and off so you can see. Now, the default there has actually darkened these two corners quite heavily, and that, that's not exactly what I want to do because there's areas of detail in there that I, I want to be seen. I want to actually have more of a kind of uh, vignette that's a little bit wider and not so dark in these corners. And what you can do is if you select Play Center, is you can customize where you actually want the center to be. So I think somewhere actually in the lower part of the image, and it's still darkening this corner a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the center size by dragging to the right. Let's move it over here a little bit. And then what I can do is I can just play with the sliders here to, to to increase the border luminosity. So if I drag this to the left, it's going to make the outside of the image really dark. If I bring it up a little bit, it's not going to have such a heavy effect. And then with the center luminosity, I kind of around here, and then maybe drop the center down a little bit. Let's just have a play around. There we go. And let's just toggle that off and on again. So it's a very subtle effect there. You can see we're just bringing out the the center of the image and so we're getting the natural kind of lead in bringing our eye into the center where this kind of rock formation is we've got these nat natural lead in lines within the terrain and within now the luminosity of the image so maybe i'm just going to bring those outside down very slightly there you go we've added three filters on there we've actually added the pro contrast on twice one for the sky one for the foreground so we'll go ahead and click ok to that Okay, so the filters have now been applied. And if we just click, we can see the before and now the after. And we can see how color effects has really sort of enhanced that image, has really brought out the detail, the colors. It really increased the contrast. Now, the other plugin, which can be really effective when used in the right way, 
is something called the detail extractor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump back into Nix. I'm going to go and add and add it on and this is without it and this is with it. Now this is once again a global adjustment and you can see if I crank it up here we go we're getting into this kind of pseudo the really kind of garish hdr detail enhanced crunchy edges really garish looking uh and it's way over the top and this is the reason why i didn't add it in the filter stack before because i want to add this very selectively so this is why I, I create a new layer and i'll apply this effect only on this and then you'll see what we'll do is we'll go out we'll apply a layer mask and i'll put this on very selectively so what I'll use the detail extractor for is there's probably a bit of detail here, only very slightly because we've already got quite a nice detail in these disguise. It's quite textured. There's a lot of contrast there, um, but I might want to bring out a little bit more of it, especially towards the edges where it starts to go uh, a little softer. And also I'd like to bring out some detail here in the foreground in the rocks and grass. So I'll go ahead and I'll add my detail extractor in and don't judge at this stage. I know it looks awful. What I'll generally do is go to the effect radius and just have a play with this. Uh, fine brings out the finer details as you'd expect. Normal is kind of uh, middle-ish and large is to enhance larger details. Now I'm gonna select fine for this and pretty much everything else I can leave alone. I could have a quick play and really go over the top if I really wanted to crank the contrast up way too much and don't want to go anywhere near that sort of sort of level saturation once again i'll probably leave that as is because if i want to change saturation i'll do that through an adjustment layer in photoshop so although it's looking fairly terrible at the moment i will go ahead and i will click brush so rather than okay i will click brush and what it does is very very helpfully is it creates a new layer with an adjustment layer already on and the adjustment layer is set to by default um, to black um, so we need to paint the color back into the image using the brush tool set to white now I'll keep my opacity down nice and low uh, probably 24 25 percent uh, that's more than enough and what I can just start to do is paint some of that detail back in so I'm going to start with the foreground and I'm just going to bring some of these grasses out a little bit here of this rock maybe a few bits here and I'm just being fairly selective and what I'll do is I'll keep turning it on and off just to see what I've done so we can see there the grass has been brought out now I'm just going to go easy on the sky but I'm just going to look at some of the detail especially out towards the edges a little bit let's just turn that on and off again so there you go this is on this is off and that's back on again so a fairly subtle approach and that's definitely what's required with the detail extractor it's very easy to go over the top with it uh, sometimes what i'll even do is once i've applied it and i've brushed it in i may even then go back and just turn the opacity of that layer down a little bit if it's a little bit too much just add a little bit into this nice sort of vein of clouds down the front something like that so this is where we've ended up with the two levels of color effects pro added on if we just go ahead and turn those off to see what we started with this was the image before this was after the first set of adjustments and then this was with the final bit of detail extractor and this is just obviously a very quick uh, five minutes that obviously typically spend a lot longer and this image still would need quite a bit of work uh, there's lots of imperfections quite a lot of noise in here I can see a few sensor spots uh, which would all need clearing up but you can see how just with five minutes worth of playing we can go from kind of a very flat fairly non-interesting image to one that really has a lot of detail a lot of contrast a lot of interest and is really sort of eye-catching hopefully that's been useful do have a play it's a great set of tools and like i say now it's completely free any questions comments please leave them below and i'll do my best to get back to you thanks very much